Hey everyone and welcome to another episode by the LEGO Train Automated Container Terminal and yes you see it correctly the red crane has been resurrected once again um, it has been almost four years in uh, the corner of the attic and I had to look it up the last time I worked on it was in March 2019 so yes a lot has been happened since tw March 2019 um, well We'll just kind of continue with this crane, but um, there are some issues that I need to discuss with you. And the first issue is that this was not the design that I had in mind. Um, I had an older design in my mind, and that was a design with one rail track and two monorail tracks. And what you see here is only one monorail track. Now, that does not fit in the uh, picture that I had for the blue crane that you see here which has the container yard and the two monorail tracks for loading and unloading containers which were intended to go both to the red crane uh, which I used to load and unload uh, from the train and to the train so that was a bit of an issue of course and I didn't understand understand why I did this so I had to look it up and there was this video I believe episode 20 and in that video um, I was looking for a new pneumatic system as I was using the scissor system uh, that's also the system that I had in mind but uh, the last episode I changed that to this what you see here and uh, that's because the scissor system was using too much uh, air um, the friction in the system was just too high. I needed a constantly uh, pressure that was just the maximum pressure that can can uh, get out of this system, of this compressor. So that's why I changed it into what you see here. Now the downside of this system is that it cannot take the container as high as the previous system because of the length of the uh, of the pneumatic cylinders. So, the problem now is, with this crane, is that it cannot get high enough to actually move a container over another container. Now, when you have two tracks, of course, that isn't a problem because you're just switching like that when you go backwards. Uh, three uh, cars or uh, monorail cars. When you have three tracks, then you have a problem. When the train track is on the right, for example, and you have another monorail track here and there's already a monorail parked for let's say unloading the a, a train but uh, there's still loading to do from this monorail to that um, you have to lift it over the other monorail to get it onto the uh, train wagon and that's not possible with it with this system and that's why i decided to go for two tracks and there's just this episode that I was uh, referring to. I literally say, and I don't know what I was thinking, but I literally said, I'm going to build two cranes. And in the new design, I use just one crane for loading and another crane for offloading. And when I heard that today, I was like, what the f are you talking about? Dear Aryan of 2019, you want me to build two of these cranes? Not one, two, really? No, not gonna happen. Um, so, <laughs> yes, yeah, not gonna happen. I, I say, I, I state that now, but but maybe <laughs> it's going to happen. I don't know yet. All right, there's another issue with this thing, with this crane, and that is it's working with an older system, uh, the EV3 system, um, because in 2019 we didn't have powered up yet. That crane is working with Powered Up and I absolutely love it. It works very correctly. This system though does not work that correctly as I'm using a third party shield uh, to control the uh, EV3 motor that is inside here. But I had some problems with the rotary encoder, some behavior that I couldn't figure out why it was doing some things. So I decided to use it as a dump motor just a normal motor without the positioning system and uh, for positioning I used the 
magnetic system that you see here one magnet on the uh, on the car and one reader that you see a read switch here and um, it detects a magnetic field and based on that i know i'm in the correct position to actually move a container so every real car has a magnet and every monorail had also a magnet uh, i just removed them when i was working on this project here and now the problem is that the magnet should be on uh, on the side here but there's no room because there's the switch this this gray thing is a switch that enables the monorail makes it go that direction that direction or just stop and as you can see there's just no room between the switch uh, because the magnet has to be on the side of the monorail um, I could place it on the other side but there's not much much room either now that is this isn't a big issue as these monorails always start and stop i mean in the same position the trains though they do not but the monorails do so what i can basically do is for the monorail because here's the read switch for the monorail magnets i can place mono, uh, magnets on fixed positions along the track something like that where the train where the uh crane knows where to stop to be in a position for the monorail to load or unload it all right that being said we have here a crane with one track now there are two options or actually we have three options to solve this problem first option make these two uh, monorail tracks that you see here converge into one track and that one track will go to the red crane now i have taken a look at my fabulous yellowed uh, monorail uh, track collection and i have come to the conclusion that that won't work i have here a switch and that switch should be connected somehow for example this one here that one there something like that and then this switch this part here should be connected to that now this switch only gets this curve here so then i need to curve back for example this well that doesn't <laughs> make it of course i can use another curve like that and go back but still the gap is way too large i don't want to mess with this crane this crane works i i, I don't want to mess with this space over here between the two monorails so a switch is not an option it just does not work i can also use for example this and another small curve here on the uh, on the end but then still you know you see that it won't match the form factor of what i have used beneath the blue crane so switch not an option i said there was three options right <laughs> I can't remember the other two. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the um, um, second one. I, I can't believe it. I can't. I'm getting old or something. I, I forget these things. <laughs> the second option is actually to... Wait, I got uh, an empty battery. One moment. Alright, I'm back. Um, I also remember the second option, which is two cranes, which is not preferable. But there's also a third option. And I don't know why I didn't think of that uh, when I was building this crane. But um, that's what I thought, uh, thought of just moments ago. I can actually use three tracks here on this system. And if I place the rail in the middle the mo and the monorails on the sides, I never have to move containers from one monorail to the other monorail that does not happen i only have to move it from this monorail for example if this is the load monorail to the train wagon or from the train wagon to the unload monorail but never across so when i place two monorails like this here's the second one and with the train rail in the middle the railway in the middle then i do not have to cross any uh, kind of uh, containers or something like that so the height doesn't matter then 
So that's a cool uh, solution. So that means that the whole crane becomes a bit wider. Is that a problem? Uh, yes, because right now it has been uh, the case that it's only driven on this side. Uh, the motor is on this side. This side is just loose. And because of the width of the crane, it doesn't matter. If I make the crane any wider, there could be some issues with it. And there may be um, the need to install a motor also on this side here. But maybe not. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. So, um, back to the monorail system. And um, that means that I have to install a second monorail here. All right, see, let's see, there's uh, four uh, studs here, or five studs between. Uh, that's also because of the monorail switch that you see there. And um, let's just have a centimeter rest uh, here. Let's have, a look. let's have a look. Now, we want to make it compatible with the other train system, of course, with the other crane. And right now from the center to the center is exactly 11 centimeters. Now I need to unhook the cable of my camera and I hope it will last. <laughs> um, so what we get here is basically what I was thinking about was making this a bit larger like that. This one over here, something like that and um, this one goes away and then we have the rail in the middle something like that um, now let's see how much this is oh, looks at that 11 and this is about 11 as well we can make that work now you might think like okay now you've got a problem because uh, where does the rail go well there will be a um, what called a ramp in the monorail system so i can i can move underneath the ramp i can move the railway out of this thing here so that won't be an issue so by doing it like this i can actually solve the issue so i can work i'm gonna run back to this crane so i can hook the uh, wire back in again so with this crane if i make it a bit wider i can actually make it all work um, like I said, I'm not very happy with the magnetic system in place right now for this, uh, for the positioning system. So I'm considering it to move it, to migrate also to the powered up system. Um, that makes it compatible with that crane. Um, it, I know it works just fine. I know this crane had some issues from now and then. So, um, I think we're going to do that also because I've already the software available for that crane. And the red crane will be working more or less the same. I don't have the, the, the Z axis, the up and down, because that's pneumatic. But the X and Y axis are pretty much the same. So I can use that uh, from the blue crane. I can uh, copy paste that code more or less, of course. That way I can make it all a bit cleaner. Because I, I don't know what it is. Maybe you, you guys see what it is. But I don't like the looks of this crane. I don't know what it, this crane looks cool it looks clean it looks i don't know slick i don't know it looks good this crane does not i want to use the the whole gantry thing like going up uh going to and then going down again move the whole red thing i think that's cool i don't want i didn't have to do that with the blue crane because it's uh it would be wider it is also wider but not as much as uh, when we add uh, another monorail track so, what are your thoughts on this system? For example, these lights that you see here, it's, it's very nice that there are lights here. But honestly, I would have put them right here, underneath here, above the track and not on top. I don't like it. So if you have any suggestions how we can make this crane look a bit better, then please let me know. Um, for now, I'm gonna stick with it, of course. Um, I'm gonna make it a bit wider and uh, see if we can squeeze in that other monorail track and then uh, we're gonna see uh, if we can make it work again and yes i think i already more or less decided to go to the uh, powered up system as well remove all the the cable 
shit going on here. I cannot remove everything because we need still we still need the magnet for uh, the the railway system, but m that's it basically. So just one magnet, one sensor. I can live with that. All right. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching. Um, this was it. If you like this video, please drop a like. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Have a look at my main channel. And uh, hope to see you next time. Bye.